Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the bagel. Um, I'm here and it's just holding an eye today. Um, so, starting off, uh, a couple nights ago I got Papa John's and I, I got a pizza and a, um, I got boneless wings. It, it, it was interesting. It was a combo meal for six ninety nine for a medium pizza and something else to get with it. So I got that for only six ninety nine. dollars shout, shout out to Papa John's. Um, besides tip. Yeah, besides tip. <laughs> tip did add up a little bit. But so I ate the pizza. I um, uh, dad, my dad uh, gets mad at me for getting Papa John's because he doesn't like Papa John's. <laughs> um, but he had, he had a slice anyway. He had one slice. Um, and um, I ate the whole pizza in like an hour, maybe less. Um, and I'm getting ready to throw it away. And he's like, "So you're already done with the pizza?" And I was like, "Yeah." He's like, "I was like, I ate seven eighths of that." <laughs> and he was like, "Yeah, you can't really reduce that fraction, can you?" I was like, "No, because seven's a prime number." We were getting really nerdy. <laughs> um, and he was like, "You're a prime number." And I was like, "Well, not not until next month because <laughs> I turned 23." And he was like, "Yeah, I miss being." Um, He's like, I miss being an even prime number. And I was like, an even prime number? Is there even an even prime number? He's like, yeah, two. I was like, you miss being two? Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, like, he's like, yeah, because I don't remember anything as a two. I was like, I was like, he's like, do you remember anything as a two? I was like, no. He's like, yeah, that's why it's great. And I was like, I guess that's a good point. <laughs> what a strange What could be terrible? Well, you just don't know. If you don't, I guess knowing less is like less stressful, I suppose. But, yeah, but that it's just nothing. It's I, quite literally nothing yeah. you think of it. But it, I just thought it was a funny conversation. I, I actually used to be really big into math before sixth grade. Like, math was my favorite subject. I, oh. It was math and science because science was like astronomy. Oh, uh, that part I, of science. I loved that part of science. And then in sixth grade, it like switched, thanks to Mr. Morgan. <laughs> he, he kind of, I liked Mr. Morgan a lot. He was a great teacher, but he taught math and science, and he kind of made it, made me feel stupid because <laughs> everyone was so much smarter than me. It's, Astronomy, oh. the only thing that I don't like about astronomy is there's so much physics attached to it. Yeah, it, well, that makes sense, right? Yeah. But, yeah, it is annoying to learn about. Jacob uh, uh, Holy Cross, shout out to Jacob Holy Cross, <laughs> I met him in chemistry class, and he was talking about how he wants to be, like, an astronomer, you know? Yeah. But he was like... Uh, he asked Mr. Alden, he's like, so I can become an astronomer without chemistry, right? He's like, no, you have to take chemistry in college. And he's like, fuck! <laughs> and he quit the whole thing. <laughs> he basically like, quit college because of that. Um, but yeah, I switched after sixth grade to my favorites being history and English. And mm. it's still my favorites to this day, history and English. Yeah. Uh, math just got too complicated and so did science. But I, I still do enjoy, like, simplified math, like fractions. And yeah, I liked... Uh, Quantit I've always hated math, but I, I like uh, quantitative reasoning. We were in, in um, yeah, in uh, uh, college because it was like a math class that used real world things. Oh right. Kinda. Um, That's interesting. Sometimes outrageous, but like real world things and applied them, kind of like taxes. Like how much would you be paying uh, down payment and interest over a course of years if you you know put this amount in or something like that. Right. Uh, so an interest. Um, so I like that kind of math, but in, in my professor was just really good because he was very enthusiastic about math. So he made it better. better yeah. That's, that's, it really depends on the teacher for every subject. Yeah. That's what, why like a physical professor or teacher is so important. Cause if you just have a computer or an online it's really, class, it takes you out of it. It's only on you. Yeah. You have to do everything. And he even said like, he said like a math class, you need to kind of be more hands on to really understand it if you don't if you're not inherently good at math because right. um he said all his online students get way worse grades than his sense. physical students and if you don't have like shawl's class where he puts all the answers on there and then you're screwed yeah <laughs> and he was one of the few teachers or i guess one of the few classes where like i thought i did absolutely awful on the test and i actually got like at a hundred right on the test so i was like holy crap what That's the surprising hell? yeah i usually never had that i usually had at least in high school like oh i, I did good on this and i did terrible yeah. <laughs> or vice versa i decided i did terrible but barely passed i think that's why i let i leaned towards history and english more because i had better teachers for those classes than i did for science and math and that made it more enjoyable of an experience like mr mcdowell was a great history teacher mr smith was a great history teacher mm -hmm. you know just made it made it easier to learn as well you know, they're very informative and 
I don't know, like science, for example, he had Mr. Alton. Like, I'm just so many call outs right now. Yeah. Teachers. But he, like, he's very monotone and very not. Bueller. Yeah. Bueller. Bueller. Yeah. It's not really, it doesn't put you into the mood to learn, I Ye- guess. Yeah. And that's the thing with why teaching, teachers are so important. Yeah. And it, should, it like, should be a more important job um, uh, just because the credentials should be higher. Yeah. Like, it should be people that are actually, like, good at talking yeah. and getting their point across presenting them. yeah instead of just you know you have a degree so congratulations you got <laughs> you can be a public teacher yeah um let's see oh so another thing i wanted to talk about a little bit baseball related um so the ml so i meant to talk about this earlier but we haven't done a podcast in a while mm-hmm. but the mlb season's well into it now uh, and a thing I like about the MLB Instagram account is, pri- uh, as opposed to prior years, yeah. I guess maybe it's on every platform besides Instagram, but I only have Instagram, so I don't really know. But um, they post the score of every single game, which is a really nice thing because, you know, it's easier to keep track of how teams are doing yeah. that way. They didn't do that in prior years. and you know, Which is strange because yeah. that's like the standard. Right. <laughs> or... So it's, it's pretty cool that they did that and, you know, makes me want to follow the account because, you know. Yeah, baseball is very interesting because it's... Very long season. Yeah, it's arguably, like, uh, technically speaking, just because it's such a long season, it's the most watched sport. But that's cheating. Because there's so many games. Yeah, and it's arguably the same amount of people going to those games, going to those tickets. So arguably, it's probably... There were so many games... There were so many people at the uh, Reds-Dodgers game Friday night. Yeah. Like, and I was surprised because we were doing shit. We were doing... (laughs) We are playing like crap right now. It's... And it's just sales... Baseball ticket sales tend to be a little cheaper. Cheaper if you're... It's the... It's supply demand, right? If your team's doing well, the demand's higher and more expensive. But if your team's not doing well, you know, it's gonna be cheaper. Yeah. If anything, the... The sport that just has, in terms of American sports, that has so much money in it is football. Yeah. And the, I argue that the sport that has the most money in it and the most following always starts to dip and become worse because ads. I hope and, I hope it doesn't happen with football. It's kind of happening. It's editing because it, of all the streaming services. That Rule changes. Um, like, they're definitely trying to streamline it. Yeah. Um, and keep their talent healthy. Which you should, but football is just a different sport. It didn't sport. really work out last year, though. There was, I think the injury number was the highest of any last year. Yeah, and that's like turfs. And again, turfs, players yeah. train their bodies different now. It's not, it's not just toughness. It's speed. It's mm-hmm. other things, and they might not be right. taking care of um, things they would in the past, like getting hit. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's the, uh, that's the only issue with... Um, football it should be physical it's just the risk you take with that sport it's like right. boxing but saying oh we need to protect the boxers from getting <laughs> knocked out right like you can't, you can't really do that uh, uh also thing uh, that's i think people are getting more into football as well like for example our friend connor because of the betting aspect because well, uh, yeah they they really are pushing that more than they had previously because it used to be like betting, you know, because for example, players, you know, they well, it makes more sense that they get banned for betting, yeah, because they're playing. But you know, they it was a lot harsher of a punishment to you know bet and whatnot. Yeah. Whereas you know, it's kind of more accepted, and that's the same same thing with baseball as well. Um, but it's interesting how like we've moved towards betting. Right? Yeah, you know? it's it just it makes our government a lot of money it makes yeah. espn a lot of money it just makes all the sports way and more it, money. it gives fans engagement because they actually care because they're losing money or gaining yeah. money off of what's happening and the issue with sports that i would say is college yeah. is ncaa the ncaa is NCAA's terrible pretty bad yeah yeah and that's not just football it's basketball it's you know other sports baseball. yeah and it's football just definitely made it worse in the sense that if you look at the conferences it's I, ruined. It's basically it's becoming. It's becoming a professional league, essentially. Yeah, and you, you're expecting college kids to do. You, you go to college not to play a sport. You go to college to learn. Yeah, for your career, <laughs> and still a very few percentage are going to become professional players. Right. So, you, so you should, as a college student, even if you get a scholarship, you should still focus on your classes. Yeah. For, for a career you want, 
Um, and it's it just is starting to promote against it because you're like, oh, I got to fly to New Jersey if you go to UCLA to play That's them in this crazy. baseball like, game and then yeah. <laughs> fly all the way Across back. The country, yeah. And it's vice versa, you know, Rutgers. Yeah. But it, that's not really on Rutgers, though. It'd be on those schools. Yeah. Because fucking Oregon and Washington and, you know. And then you have Stanford and Cal going to the ACC, the Atlantic <laughs> Coast Conference. Yeah, it's, it's crazy that... It's gone to that point. And another thing... A lot of people are excited about it, but those are, like, kind of younger fans. Yeah. Who aren't, like, used to the tradition of the rivalry that's... I guess there are some rivalries that are coming back, like Texas and A&M. Those are yeah. that's coming back, but you're also losing, like, you know, the classic, like, Washington, Washington State, Oregon, Oregon State. Yeah. So. And if football meant more when it didn't have, like money behind it that's what made college football better than professional yeah because professional you're getting paid and people are paying like paying a good amount of money to go see the game so that's why they're not rowdy or anything right um but like college yeah. it's like it's that's it that could be the, kids yeah. yeah that could be the only four years you're playing right so you you know you you, like Boise State back in the day, you would have these small colleges coming out of nowhere because yeah, yeah. they, they yeah, they would care more about. It. That's yeah. just not gonna happen as much. Anymore. I guess that's I guess yeah, I guess I take back a little bit about what I said for NCA for different sports. I think it's strictly football because basketball has still got the same formula. It's got the Sweet Sixteen, got, yeah. got the, the tournament, uh, and you know you see smaller schools doing better because of that. Yeah, but I think, and all these conference realignments have changed because of football and it's going to impact other sports as well like basketball is going to be weird to see now yeah uh, you know hockey hockey yeah. <laughs> but, um, hockey, hockey like is weird too because there's like a lot of power five schools don't even have a hockey team like you know like yeah Southern, southeast conference schools yeah they're very small it's funny that arizona state has a hockey team yeah. <laughs> but the they're losing a professional team yeah right? or they're gone now they're in utah do you know what their team name is? Or are they sticking with the Coyotes? The Blizzard, no. Um, oh, that sucks. The Blizzards, the Coyotes could still technically come back because the owner has the owner was so bad that they were so forced in an athletic situation. In yeah, the A's. yeah, like they could come back if they if the owner himself is able to get an agreement with the city of Phoenix to build an arena. Gotcha. That's the deal. Okay. So it might happen. It might not. Could. But it also could be like a San Diego situation, you know. <laughs> well, that's all fucking Spanos' fault. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, this did want to lead. Another thing that's so annoying um, is I don't think the NCAA game is coming out on PC. Is it not? And, and the argument is that they it's too hard for a billion corpor- dollar corporation to port a game to a PC. <laughs> it's so stupid. They're just cutting off sales the argument that is kind of valid pc players don't play sports games as much connor is the only advocate for that yeah he's been playing madden on steam <laughs> <laughs> but um still it's really stupid and yeah. you're making less money than you could and ea sucks yeah i don't that's why that. i don't think the ncaa game is going to be that good i'm not pre-ordering it i'm waiting for it to be that's out that's what i'm doing as well I'm yeah like yeah waiting i don't for I, the reviews and whatnot yeah i don't think it's gonna be good it just this trailers looks like a reskin of madden True, yeah. So they took out mascot mode. Yeah, that pissed Ray off because Ray uh, Narvaez Jr. He uh, every six months he does a mascot tournament where he has the computers control different mascot teams and they do a tournament for each school. Mm-hmm. It's pretty funny to watch because he commentates over it too. Yeah, um, and uh, he he does that in June and December twice a year, and he would always do it on the uh, NCAA fourteen because it was the most recent one. And he yeah. was like, "Please bring a mascot mode to this one." <laughs> Obviously, it didn't happen. Yeah, so. the developers heard his cries and went, that guy? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, it's kind of a shame that they didn't add that. Um, and uh, there was a... I, I liked the uh, the loading screen where you're entering in the game and, like, choosing your schools. That mm-hmm. screen looked pretty cool because that was leaked. It was, yeah. like, um, UCF and USF, that screen. Mm-hmm. And um, it has, like, the helmet and the logo and the helmet and the logo for each team. It looks That's, cool. That is cool. But um, it's just... I might not get it at all right because i don't really want to get a game i have a well family has a ps5 but i just don't i'm not i don't want to get one game for a console and only honestly play it on my dad will probably get it <laughs> so you'll be so able to i'll see. be fine i'll play with you all right on the, yeah we should do that <laughs> um but yeah it's it's just dumb to me and i realize triple a is which weird indie games are better than ever 
Triple yeah. A games are worse than ever. Yeah. It's funny how it's gone to that. I like it though, because you know, give more love to the indie developers who you know have been working really hard. Yeah, they can make better games, and it's one of my arguments. I think the best quote unquote triple A company is Valve. Yeah. And it's ironically because Valve doesn't make anything really, right. and they have legendary series. What's like their Portal, last game Half-Life. they made? Uh, I guess Counter Strike Two, oh, well. if you want to count that the new <laughs> engine. If you want to Counter Strike that. Yeah, but. Uh, yeah, they're only the worst thing Steam ever did was a game called Artifact that was terrible. Um, but arguably, the worst thing they also don't do is just add stuff to their catalog. Yeah, Half Life Two came out in two thousand four, by the way. God. Still one of the greatest games of all time. Yeah, they which never is crazy, the one. but that's the yeah. thing. Is that they, that's the joke about Valve is that they can never get trilogies out they always end at two yeah and it's the benchmark though like gabe even himself said like they used half-life as the benchmark of like development of games so that it's the next standard yeah and they talk he's starting to talk about it more now because half-life alex came out and that was a vr game um and he said his saying was that he he's they're waiting for like gaming to develop to the point to where like it's not a VR headset anymore. It's just like neurological. Interesting. Like you so just you see it. it with your brain. Yeah. Like he said, he, and he said it nonchalantly like, yeah, that will probably be the next where gaming's heading. And he's like, it's not that far off. <laughs> and I was like, what the heck? That would be insane. He's a genius. By the way. Yeah. I know it's not far off in the sense that on 60 Minutes, I don't know if you ever saw this, but there was a Indian guy that connected his brain to Google mm. and he like would search stuff up. And it was so weird. Like, you'd sit there and search it up in this little screen. God. And you just search that it up. That is weird. That's crazy that yeah. our brains have the power to do that. Neurological Like, I wouldn't stuff. even... I don't think I'd be able to do that because of how my brain thinks. Because I'm in different spots all Well, the time. it's not like... I know, but, like, to concentrate on that, and I, I think I'd fumble the bag. I wouldn't we, be able to do that. It's kind of in the sense, though, like, you're on your phone without your phone. Right. Yeah. So you but even still, when I'm on my phone, I'm I'm like I'm gonna do this, but I'm doing something else. Yeah, so it would be like that in a sense. Yeah. So, um, but like, yeah, that's I think that's where future is kind of headed. Where like we don't even have a phone. It's just like oh, I need to call mom, and you're just you know on your in your head. Right. Call mom. Yeah, <laughs> and then you're talking. That's so weird to think about. Like it creeps me out. Yeah, that, I definitely think technology is headed. Um, in that way, mm. where it's just completely hands off, um, yeah, which is going to be crazy. I don't know if humans are meant for that, so no, yeah, probably not. Yeah. Oh man, um, have you ever? S- so okay, uh, I saw this like about a month ago, I think. But um, Puss in Boots: The Last Wish. Have you seen that? Parts of it. Parts of it. Very good movie. Very yeah. good movie. It really reminds me of Shrek, like the first Shrek in a lot of ways, because Puss is Shrek. Mm-hmm. And then you have Donkey, which is, um, I forget the character's name, but he's the dog. And then, um, uh, fuck, I forget the female's name as well. So it's like the literal plot of what that movie no, was? No, it's not the plot. It's just the character dynamics remind me of Shrek. Oh, of how that was. Okay. Yeah. Um, Kitty Southpaws is uh, Fiona. Yeah. She, she was from the first person. Right. right. Yeah. And yeah. she wasn't in the second one, I guess. Oh. The second one, uh, I was talking to Jacob about this too, because he was like, there was a second Puss in Boots? Because yeah. uh, he was like, yeah, was, he was like, uh, The Last Witch was a great second movie for him. And I was like, there, that's the third one. There's a second one that nobody talks yeah. about. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, really? Yeah. But yeah, the first one was pretty good. And then the uh, second one we don't talk about. And then the third one, very the artwork is amazing. Like, very beautiful, like the way that it's drawn and everything. Yeah, I noticed. Uh, that's what I thought like Shrek 4 might look like. Or... But a uh, Shrek Five, yeah. but Shrek Five is, is I don't know what happened to it. Um, do you want me to spoil the very last scene? For, yeah, okay. yeah. Um, so at the end, it's Puss, Kitty, Soft Paws, and um, the dog uh, going on a ship, and he, the dog's like, "Where are we going, Puss?" And he's like, "Going to see some old friends," and then it pans to see far, far away, oh. and it plays the Shrek theme. So okay, I thought that was pretty cool. sweet. It's funny that the Shrek universe has like a multiverse going on. <laughs> yeah. I think it has a literal map of the universe. Yeah. It's so crazy how that series has gotten. Yeah. Um, Very good movie. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, so um, I went to a Reds game. This we were uh, It was like fucking April, I think. I don't remember. It was last month, but it was against the Angels back when we were good. Yeah. Uh, it was right before a losing streak. 
<laughs> and um, we won that game. But so there's a player on the Angels named Taylor Ward, and he was up to bat. And the guy behind us was heckling, saying, "You suck, Ward. <laughs> Go back home." And my dad lost it because he's like, "Why are you heckling this random guy?" <laughs> and then my brother looked up Taylor Ward and said, "Born in Dayton, Ohio." <laughs> so I was like, "Oh, maybe he knows what we're doing." <laughs> he knows. <laughs> oh yeah, he might know. I saw the thing. I think it was one of the Orioles players was debuting, and his family showed up. Yeah. And it was like raining. Oh boy. And um, he hit. Uh, uh, I think he hit like a single though, but it was like a lawn at bat. Like it, it went to uh, um, pitch like eight. Yeah, pitch eight, and uh, he kept fouling it off. And like the, everyone was cheering his name, but it was because his friends and family were in the front, uh, and then eventually the whole crowd was on it. That's funny. And they were like, "Come on!" <laughs> and he hit yeah. a. <laughs> hit oh, that's another thing. At the Reds game, I'll talk about. Oh, go back to the Royals in a second. But um, at the Reds game, a fucking wave started in the fifth inning. It lasted until like the seventh inning. Mm. It was driving me crazy. <laughs> Can people just stop putting their arms up? And I was getting fed up with it. You're like one of the announcers <laughs> with a people. Stop putting the Like, arms. it was funny the first three times, but the fourth time I was like, all right, this kid got old. <laughs> but, God. Um, but back to the Royals. They're playing their best baseball since 2015, and I'm excited for it. They're playing really well right now. They had a really young team last year, right? Yeah, and their team's still pretty young. Yeah. Um, they got Salvi still, the only player left from that team, Salvador mm-hmm. Perez. Um, and then they got Bobby Witt, who's playing really well. Um, uh, they're like 10 games above 500 or something. Hmm. Doing pretty well. Uh, they're right now rivaled the Guardians right now because they the Guardians are like two games ahead because they're doing really well too. The yeah. AL Central's crazy. How are the um, aren't they a little like a few games above five hundred? The um, Mariners. I have no idea. Okay. I, I don't know. I, I don't really. Pay. Astros are terrible. Oh, are they? I don't pay much attention to the AL West that much. Oh, uh, Astros completely fell off. Yeah, which is crazy. That's good though. I'm happy about that. Yeah. This year, I mean, I think the Yankees, like every year, Yankees Dodgers would be the favorite. Yeah, probably. Um, but obviously, no one wants that to happen. Dodgers, though, like, uh, what's the, the, the Shohei point. isn't as like hasn't been as good as because he's not pitching in the you know because he's only batting. So. Yeah, and the Cubs pitcher is really good. Yeah. Um. So he I still taste that cinnamon. Oh yeah. God. The Cubs, I mean, aren't they all right right now? They kind of have to... They're better than the Reds. The Reds are last right now. Oh, my God. In the, in the division. They're, How are the Pirates? They're second to last. Second to last. Maybe right. the Cardinals are second to last, but right now the Brewers are leading. Bro, I, this, I, I think it's Brewers. Or I Brewers. thought the Brewers would win the... The division. Yeah. Um, I was hoping the Reds would. The Reds, um, my dad said, in the last 30 games, are the worst team in baseball. <laughs> so, right now we're not... Worse than the White Sox? Yeah, it would surprise wow. me because the red the White Sox started off terrible. They were like three and twenty six or something. Yeah, <laughs> but they've been stepping up recently. I think. Yeah, they, their team is just literally no one. They've completely gutted their team. Yeah. Hopefully they don't move. They shouldn't. I mean, yeah, obviously no. there's another Chicago team there, but yeah, that's the only thing I could see. Vegas kind of has a shitty market for baseball. I at least I think. Well, I don't know. They're still moving Oakland there, right? Yeah. It's unfortunate. They're going to Sacramento. Or they're playing in Sacramento they're playing there this year, yeah. Or next year. Because I think they're, this, oh, this is yeah. their last year in Oakland. Yeah. And then next year they're going to Sacramento for like a temporary housing or whatever. Yeah. That's um, the thing. I just don't think baseball is going to expand because I don't think the demand is there. I think there's more demand in football and ironically hockey. Which, so, you know, because those are the old team. Those are the leagues that need more teams. Yeah. But um, hockey is just crazy in a sense. Hockey is really good when a city is there. Because a lot of people from that city go so and see this it. is a good example. Like, we live here and we see how big the Blue Jackets are. Even yeah. Though, even though, you know, you don't like them. But. Yeah. It, but uh, hockey has a good international market, which I think makes more money than baseball. Yeah. Versus baseball's international market just isn't as good. Like. South America. Right. Um, oh, man, they're big soccer down there. Yeah, football, football down there. Yeah, fo- uh, football too. Like, yeah. soccer in, or football is, yeah. like, the sport to play. And they said that um, the stadium that the Packers and Eagles are playing in mm-hmm. um, for the Brazil game to open week one, they uh, that stadium has a rival team that wears the same colors as the Eagles, really? and they don't want them to wear those colors. So they have to switch uniforms, essentially. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> so they have to wear some... White, I assume, because oh. they have like the same green. Oh, that's interesting. My Russian teacher told me like no one's gonna care. Oh really? Yeah, 
I think it'll be do. I think it'll do well. Probably. It'll be packed, yeah. but as she said like no one. It, 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 it'll be like more of a tourist thing than like people. Than actual people watching about football. The yeah. Like, whereas in Europe, you see them actually watching the sport. Yeah, caring a little more about football. Even though Europeans, I guess it's not the opinion of all of them, but it seems like more of just like, oh, it's a little cool thing. But they yeah. care more about. Like, actual things yeah other football and other, yeah hockey. that's the thing with us too because we also have soccer over here but we care more about football than soccer yeah so. or football like yeah it's funny where like if europeans go to play american soccer um yeah. or american football uh and it's like not no. they say it's like the, the end of their careers or they're not good soccer players <laughs> because they're coming to the u.s to play and not like you know other countries that's which is funny to think same that's with it. rugby players coming to the nfl yeah. They were talking crap about him. There's a rugby player for the Wales, um, one of the Wales uh, professional teams, mm. and he was like, I've done everything I could do. And everyone's like, this guy didn't win anything. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like Mike Trout. Yeah. <laughs> so. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's yeah, interesting. Um, anyway. So, uh, I don't know what else we could talk about. Is that everything that's on? There's something else I'll talk about, but that's... Uh, Related to, um, uh, oh, I have some work stories, actually, that I've been meaning to talk about. So, there's this guy I work with, Sammy. He, I've known him for about two years now, but this story from when we met two years ago, I've kept in my brain, and I actually wrote down finally. So, um, he met, we met two years ago, and I was working in a truck, and Sammy was, to, I guess Sammy was told to go, uh, he's a cool guy, by the way, he was told to go into the truck with me. Um, and, uh, he goes up to me, he's like, your name's Owen? I was like, yeah. He starts laughing. I'm like, what? And he goes, dude, the only Owen I know is from Total Drama. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, that's a good character. <laughs> yeah, it's hilarious. <laughs> like, it's, like, it's some foreign name <laughs> only from that show. <laughs> it's pretty funny. I, I texted you yesterday about this, but, um, the worker, uh, she, uh, she's about, like, five foot, maybe, blonde mm-hmm. hair. Um, she was like, I, I introduced myself. She's like, I'm helping out for day sort, um, just for the night. And mm-hmm. I was like, okay. And she was like, what's your name? I was like, Owen. And she's like, Owen. Okay. And then I go to my door, door eight. Yeah. And she's like, what's your name again? I was like, Owen. And she's like, okay. And then she, uh, moves me to door four and then I'm working in door four and she goes, Hey, Holden. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, my name's Owen. And she's like, Owen. And then she got like really upset with herself. Like, it's it funny. <laughs> God. But that's, you know. And then um, a, another work story is uh, one of my favorite people I like working with is Herb. He's been there since like 2004. Herb. Um, he's a really cool guy. Um, uh, I was uh, like throwing E-regs down a slide and Jason was like pulling them off and putting them on the belt. Mm-hmm. And uh, Herb was in the door next to me and he was like, just chuck them down there. Keep throwing them at Jason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, all right. And then Jason was like, do not take career advice from that man. <laughs> and then Herb was like, don't take career advice from the black man. <laughs> and then Jason was like, you know I didn't say that. It's <laughs> funny. That's <laughs> hilarious. Herb yeah. is cool. I worked a few times. Yeah, before. he's working day and night right now. Which is weird. That is so weird. So it comes, maybe it lives close. Yeah. But it's a weird schedule because it's like the opposite day, like, you know, hours. Yeah. You can make a lot of money at UPS. It's just the full-time hours are awful. Yeah. Like, there's nothing I am interested in doing. Like, the only thing that'd be good is morning and day. But like yeah. a 9 to 5 type deal. But sadly, morning and day, you could only get after doing full-time for a little bit. Right. And then, yeah. Because yeah. there's nothing good that pairs with night, really. Because yeah. if, you, if you do Twilight tonight, like you have, like my dad did, told me it's like terrible to do that because he's worked Twilight before and mm-hmm. it's just, the hours are very inconvenient. Well, yeah, it takes away your, any social life you would ever have. Right. Yeah. So you better already have a wife and kids because <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to be talking to anyone. That's funny. That's why it's, yeah, I just don't really like, um, like it with that. Also the health issues you probably develop later isn't very good yeah the union steward even kind of said it he didn't say it directly but he was like yeah to get surgeries but to take care of you <laughs> that's sweet yeah <laughs> so um yeah it's the the issue with that place yeah so um this so this is a i'm gonna talk about chima in a little bit so rooster teeth is dead officially oh. their, their last week was in may uh may like 5th and whatever that week, mm-hmm. you know, did Jeff 
say anything? Jeff, Jeff, um, Bernie came back from Scotland. So, oh, really? So, yeah, he, he was there that week. And it's funny because um, their last video, or second to last video maybe, is um, Matt, uh, Bernie, Jeff, and Gus, the Founding Fathers, oh, playing okay. Halo 1 together. Oh, was. Nice. Um, and uh, it was funny because Bernie had the, uh, the guest tag. <laughs> like, you know, they let people in the building as yeah. guests. Yeah. And he's the founder, so that's, he had the guest tag. That's funny. <laughs> and um, I thought that was pretty funny. But, uh, yeah, they all... Uh, they had like final like thoughts or whatever and they had like a huge live stream like to you know because everybody's losing their jobs or whatever yeah ray was there no ray wasn't there <laughs> uh michael wasn't there oh and gavin wasn't there interesting uh, yeah, jack and jeff were there uh bernie was there um ryan wasn't there <laughs> <laughs> yeah ryan wasn't there or not. god what a man <laughs> uh, um, but <laughs> um but i was looking at the um the the off topic podcast that they did, uh, Chima Niner did. It mm-hmm. was four hundred and four episodes. Four hundred four was their last episode, mm-hmm. and their title was "Air Not Found" or whatever. Yeah, clever. Mm-hmm. Um, the most popular off topic episode was the one Ray was on. Had, really? had the most views. <laughs> That's figures. And, and the second most popular was the first one, the first episode, mm-hmm. which is funny that Ray out edged the very first episode. Yeah, it's crazy how Ray is kind of like their. Uh, the golden goose yeah. of the Rooster Teeth. <laughs> kind of, yeah. Just because... Uh, he wasn't there long in the grand scheme of the company, but yeah. he, when he was there, it was it's the, the most best. memorable. Yeah, yeah and that's what just shows how... And it's funny how great uh, of a content creator he is, because it's not like he... He's, he does do unique things, but like... It, it, it's not like it's very different than the others. It's no, just, it's he just, just has really quick... He's more likable. Yeah, yeah. He's more likable, yeah. 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 His wit was... Cause a lot of things, a lot of jokes he said in videos would nobody would catch, and then in the comments were like, "I heard that right." <laughs> yeah, like yeah, right. It, it, that's what's funny, right? And he was just so insanely good at almost all the games yeah. they played. It's, it's funny too because a lot of people say Ray's really good, but Ray and Michael both said this. Uh, Ray's okay at games, but the rest of them are just really bad. <laughs> yeah, so he would look insanely <laughs> yeah. good, which is just funny. Um, but yeah, it, it's it. Rooster Teeth just over woke, uh, like had a way over way, welcome stay and yeah. a very primitive way of how YouTube is done. Because no one needs to be part of a machinima. No one needs no. to work for a company. No, yeah. So it's especially like one that's well. The thing is interesting about Rooster Teeth. They actually competed with YouTube in the early years, like because they were yeah. they had their own website and they were like you know they thought YouTube was a rival. They thought of YouTube as a rival. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then they eventually joined in like 2009. Obviously lost. Yeah. And then, yeah. Joined. But it's interesting it lasted as long. I don't know how much money. Well, they, did they, were they bankrupt? Is that why they, or um, were they just losing so much money and they, eventually went, okay, we need to go? Yeah, their content got stale over the last four years. Mm-hmm. And um, essentially, uh, they are or- they're owned by a company that's owned by a company <laughs> that's owned by Warner Brothers. Oh. So they eventually were an afterthought to Warner Brothers. So they're like, yeah, we don't need this anymore. So just fire everybody there yeah, yeah, right, they, right. to save money. For the more important companies, I guess. But they basically sold out to corporate. I think they sold out in 2014 to a certain thing that fell under in 2018. No. So that kind of fucked them. And then yeah. Warner Brothers brought them, bought them in 2019. Oh. So, of course, Warner Bros. is late to the party. Yeah. Like, the kids love this. <laughs> yeah. What was that again? <laughs> oh, man, this is a great video. What is this? T- oh, 2013? That's probably still good. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, the kids love, uh, what is it called? PewDiePie? We'll get them on there. <laughs> It is funny, though, because in 2019, uh, speaking of PewDiePie, but not really PewDiePie, uh, Markiplier was on the RT podcast in 2019, oh. which is interesting. And Rhett and Link have been on the podcast, too. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. Rhett and Link were very smart because they just made it their own company, and they, right. have, a ma- they have a manager, but um, they are one of like the longest-running just like yeah. YouTube shows, and they still get so many views. That's what they talked about on that podcast, was that Rooster Teeth and Rhett and Link were pretty much you know came from the same thing not, yeah. not the same thing but came at the same time and Rhett, it, the podcast featured Rhett, Link, Bernie and Gus so that was a good one <laughs> they're talking about their age as well because they all grew up in like the 70s and 80s yeah they're so old Rhett and Link are like the dads <laughs> yeah. they've always been uh, I mean they're not far off from our dad's age right. so yeah. I've always associated them with that um, I also watched, that made me like get onto like a little Rhett and Link Rooster Teeth binge a little bit because they, they did a couple of collabs with Rooster Teeth 
staff. They did the uh, they did a slow mo guys video hmm. with uh, Gavin and Dan. Oh yeah, I remember. I think they were together for the pillows one. Yeah, was, yeah. And then another one they did was the champagne bottle that they cut with a knife. Oh yeah, that so was pretty cool. It's um, but yeah, they're. Uh, I still watch Rhett and Link stuff from I guess GMM every yeah. now and then. Um, I used to, it used to be a tradition where I watched them like daily, but I'd watch them at night, not in the morning. Mm. But yeah, yeah, um, it's interesting back in the day. But yeah, it's uh, the state of YouTube now though is like it's a, a big pond. Yeah, Very unless big pond. unless you are already established, it's uh, rough. Yeah, especially with the algorithm because people the algorithm used to be. Um, a funny video and then the recommended videos were other videos by that channel mm -hmm. now the algorithm is other funny videos by other channels so it kind of takes away from the channel and the individual yeah you know. um, and it's mainly done through shorts now right so you'll notice youtubers will have a video. full video but, <laughs> yeah but they'll have the like a 60 second short of that I don't know hour video yeah has a little snippet in it and you notice those get more views like, especially, yeah. like, the historical random yeah. ones will be like, Napoleon's favorite food was the cheese. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, like, could be completely... Impossible. Yeah, and it's in the hour of it. <laughs> oh, it's just something weird. Interesting thing I learned. Um, so, you know Simon from Biographics? Yeah. Apparent, so, I learned this, like, a week ago that he's just reading from a script. He's just a presenter, essentially. <laughs> yeah, I thought yeah. he. I thought he knew all this stuff. Really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I remember as a kid, I learned you, how YouTubers, like, behind the scenes like AVGN yeah um, and even JonTron where they had like scripts and yeah I thought it, was, it seems like genuine, seem, yeah, genuine but they have scripts they don't always follow them but that's, they have the scripts set up that's why I think Twitch is kind of interesting because it's live and you know they're not reading for a script yeah. if, they're, if they're entertaining then it's good you know? Yeah, it's just usually very boring it is usually the only it's mainly gaming stuff yeah again the only streamer that I can watch but have on the background just kind of listen to him and sometimes watch his ray yeah there you go. it's the only one but yeah his fucking uh, when he's just chatting with his chat he plays the music his fucking his mix is so random it went from like billy joel to punk rock to, <laughs> to uh, yeah. the beatles he had he, uh, with a little help from my friends on there um and then it went from that to fucking Post Malone. <laughs> <laughs> I remember you'd always play the Flamingo yeah, song. Yeah, that song. Yeah. Oh, God. Freaking Ray. Yeah, and his Taco Bell. His so, favorite restaurant. Yeah, restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> Fast food joint. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I don't know. So, you know of American Ninja Warrior, right? Or just Ninja Warrior in general. Yeah. So they do the obstacles and stuff. So, as a kid, I grew up with a little bit of an origin story here. Um, I grew up with, um, on G4, they played Sasuke, which is Japanese Ninja Warrior and mm -hmm. where it originated from. I think that's all I've s that's, only what I that's, saw. That's the good shit right yeah. there. So, um, I, I used to keep tabs of every Sasuke up until like mm -hmm. episode, or Sasuke 33 or something, and then I stopped for a while. Um, or maybe it was like Sasuke 30 I stopped, but... Mm -hmm. um, it was um, a lot of competitors that I liked. Shingo Yamamoto is probably my favorite. Um, Makoto Nagano is good. But, um, but uh, I was really big into Japan when I was like 8, 9, 10 because like, of that. Mm -hmm. and, and then I kind of fell off a little bit in my teenage years because I got interested in other things. Yeah. But that, that's um, I just wanted to shout out Sasuke because it was a huge thing. Um, and last a couple of years ago, I went to their YouTube channel to find like what they've been up to and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And... Um, at that time, they were doing Sasuke 40, the 40th anniversary of Sasuke, but it was not really 40 years, just the 40th Sasuke. Yeah. Because uh, I started in, like, 1999 or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Shingo Yamamoto, who is the only person who's been on every Sasuke, mm -hmm. he's 45 now, and he completed the first stage, making him the oldest person to complete the first stage, which I think hmm. is awesome. Hmm. Um, that is interesting. And uh, another one, Kane Kasugi... He's like, he was born in California, but he has Japanese heritage. Yeah. And he was on Sasuke from like one to eight and then stopped going. Mm -hmm. And then he was on Sasuke 40 and he completed the first stage. He was, so it was funny. Ken Kasugi was the oldest person to complete the first stage. Yeah. And then Shingo Yamamoto the same day passed him as the oldest. <laughs> yeah, so, that's funny. <laughs> um, but the, both are really cool. Um, but yeah, just a little, I just wanted to touch on that because... Uh, 
just history for me. I remember the Japanese one is always better than the American. I think the American one fell off. It did. Um, interestingly enough, I think it was like Sasuke 24 is when the first like Americans came in because they had like there was like a challenge documentary for like the three best Americans to be on the Japanese Ninja Warrior mm-hmm. and those three were in, in incorporated into uh, Sasuke and they were on it yeah. and it was funny just watching three white guys play <laughs> and the rest are Japanese um, um, but they did well one in particular um, I forget his name I don't remember his name um, but he like failed on the third stage and Makoto Nagato who's like a legend like patted him on the back mm-hmm. and um, yeah so the grand champions that I think t- I don't remember who they were after 28, but I remember the first two Grand Champions were um, Kazuhiko Akiyama was the first. He did it in Sasuke 4, and then Makoto Nagano did it in Sasuke 17. But yeah, basically to become the Grand Champion, you have to complete all four stages. In the fourth stage, you have to like climb a huge tower. Yeah, and I remember that. that that's the a tower thing. Yeah, very tough to do, because um, you have to do it in like 30 seconds or some shit. Yeah. Um, but um, I there's been a third and a fourth champion, but I don't know their names. One was a shoemaker, and then the other one was a uh, I don't know his name, but he's still playing right now. The fourth one. Oh. Um, he was a shoe shiner. A shoe shiner. Yeah. yeah. Makoto Nagano and Kazuhiko Akiyama got too old, so they stopped playing. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, there was a firefighter too. The guy with the orange pants. Uh, Takeda is his last name. I forget his first name. Mm-hmm. Um, to Kata, Mortal Kombat character. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I just nerded out a little bit of her fucking old Japanese <laughs> stuff, but I just thought it was interesting. Um, yeah, G4 kind of fucking died, didn't it? <laughs> G4's gone. I remember when G4 would have, like, gaming yeah. news. It had, like... Um, it was, like, the first, like, gaming channel. Yeah, kinda. like, you'd go in the GameStop as a kid, and it would be on, on the TV. Thing, yeah. Yeah, and they're like, this new game is great. Attack of the Show. Yeah. Um, it was a funny story because I was listening to an old like, um, podcast that Michael Jones was on, and he was like, I got G four to watch these game shows that you're describing, yeah. for example, and uh, he he buys it. And then he looks at it, and the only shit that's on is cops. Yeah. And he was pissed off that he's only cops. It's hilarious. <laughs> that was funny. And it's, it's just like, why would you ever watch a TV program for <laughs> gaming news? Right. It's all on YouTube. That's true. Well, back then, this was like 2011 when he did this. Uh, yeah. But even like since the dawn of time, no. uh, uh, you, time YouTube has just been that place for gaming. It's right. Just yeah. The pioneer of that. When it was created. That was, I think that was my last topic with Sasuke. So we can jo- go off the cuff for a little bit. Um, but, yeah, it's, uh, it is crazy. I always thought with, like, Japanese culture so merged with American themes yeah. now. And it's one of those outliers of Asian countries where a lot of the Asian countries still retained, um, have a lot of influence from other places or have lot of their own strong identity yeah. another place is like vietnam right when vietnam virtually kicked us out um, did a great job they kept their own uh ideology in their own country and they mm-hmm. love it like they love it they work with us now there's mcdonald's i think in vietnam but it's not like that's the identity of their country no right where japan has almost like became a mini u.s where it's commercialism kind of. and yeah. it, it really um, built it up, but it still has its own. It still flair. has its own like yeah uh, exactly uh, culture. For example, going back to Sasuke for a little bit, um, when I'd watch it, they would all get really, or most of them would get disappointed when they lost, like really sad, and it like put you into it, like you're sad that they lost too, and, yeah, and like because they're ashamed that they lost, and like they're like damn it, like you know, yeah. But when it, when you watch the Americans lose, they're like oh, oh well. <laughs> Get it next time. It's how Americans work versus, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it's, it's, it's just interesting uh, how Japan is as a country. Japan, too, they're, they're one of those really strange countries in terms of history. Yeah. Just because 
Um, and it's funny how, like, they've always been kind of one of those alien countries just because... Only traded with the Dutch for a long time. Yeah, and Portuguese. And, yeah, they, and they didn't have people, like, invade them all the time. The, it's funny that the Mongols' invasion twice stirred their country into a civil war for, like, almost over a hundred years. The Mongols, the same thing happened in China as well, like, with the Mongols. Because, you know, when the Mongols... China didn't have any influence for a while after the Mongols because of the Mongols. And yeah. then... Um, the British and people came in and they were like, hey, why won't you, because, you know, China in the back of their heads are like the Mongols, you know, but Great Britain doesn't understand why in the Opium War. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and it's funny, I think it was the Yuan Dynasty was under the Mongols. Yeah. Um, and it was, uh, like, people that fought against the Japanese were Koreans, Mongols, and Chinese. Right. Um, Which is funny. <laughs> yeah, and the Japanese, or at least I was reading from historical accounts, the, Ch- the Japanese killed like, without discrimination, um, would kill the Mongols, would kill the um, Koreans, and would kill the northern Chinese. Yeah. Chinese. But the southern Chinese were kept as slaves. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but they were spared. <laughs> That's funny. I was like, That's it's not funny, very serious. Yeah, it was so um, odd to me. And the Mongols fighting was insane. Yeah, like they, very brutal. They took over Tsushima, and they took over the island of Tiki. And the ghosts there. And they would, uh, yeah, um, and they would, like, take the women and tie them around the boat, and they would have the woman still alive, like, impaled Ooh, on the boat. That's terrible. Like, screaming, obviously, yeah. and then they would come up um, and attempt an invasion. God. They ruled with fear, pretty much. Yeah. Um, um, going back to the Yuan uh, dynasty, um, the... Uh, the, the Mongols ruled, and it was a good era. It was like a golden era. Yeah. But the people in China hated them because it's a foreign foreign rule. Yeah. So China, that was not a good period for the Chinese, but it was good for the economy. You know. Yeah, it was a good time to be alive. The Mongols didn't have. That's why the Mongols lasted a little longer than they did. Because at right. first it was, they kind of let the can uh, Khanates, Khanates, yeah, uh, which are just states pretty much uh, do their own thing. So they could practice their own religion as and long, let, as, long yeah. as you gave money to the the Khan right. and you in and, and let the Khan like use your land as military force you were fine. Yeah. So and that was and if you didn't like listen to them then he would kill everybody. Yeah. So that was kind of the uh, agreement of what the Khan had. He ruled with fear, which can last in the short term as long as you can keep things going, which surprisingly it lasted generations. Yeah. But it just didn't as last as long as it could have because it was through fear. So eventually, the people were like, "Wait, we can, we're more powerful now. We can get these guys out right. of here." You know, they <laughs> fucking learn more about themselves, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> now the Mongols are a complete shell. Um, yeah, it's interesting themselves. too because I didn't know until a few days ago that um, uh, Mongolia was a part of China from like the 1800s until like the early 1900s. Yeah. Um, and they broke away essentially. Yeah, um, and Ch- Ch- and it was funny. China didn't really want them either. They really, yeah, they anything. they like mutually agreed to separate. Yeah, because um, the Mongols tried to become part of the Soviet Union, and that yeah. didn't work out. Like they're it, they're just a very like their country. It's just the people, pretty much. Now. Yeah, they're mainly farmers. Which is kind of something to behold, really. You know that simplicity, I guess. Yeah, that at one point they were so powerful, and now they're. They're remembered forever in history because of it, but... That's the interesting thing of every country in the world. I like every country in the world because of the history. Yeah. I like... Because, you know, obviously there's countries I don't like now, but they have history where I did like them, you know? Yeah. Yeah, every country has a point where you like... history. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And still the greatest time in history is Pax Romana. So, yeah. yeah. (laughs) 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 But... um, Oh gosh. Yeah, it's it's just uh, uh, interesting learning how each, how every culture is pretty much at one point did the same. Where fight warfare back then was just so different. Warfare yeah. has never been good, but it, we've just en- engineered ways of a quicker death, so it so it isn't as <laughs> still suffering. brutal, but yeah, not suffering. Yeah. yeah. Where back then it was like you would get a... It's why like when you look at battles back then like thousands surrendered. Because you don't want to get stabbed to death or yeah. well, like killed in a brutal way. Like you think like as a historian you're like, why did they do this? They had the, they had the manpower and then you think of their mentality. They're like, I don't want to lose, you know. Yeah. That's why this like going to the American Civil War. That's why the Union 
was so close to the Confederacy. Like it wasn't it wasn't as one sided because you have people like um, McClellan who's like not wanting to give up men. Yeah, he wants to like be cautious. He was very cautious, and then you put Grant in there. He's like fuck this. And, those men after men. Yeah. Like, it, it just shows... And it hurts you in the long run. Like, the Russians don't have a population as they once had. Yeah. Um, and you, you rely on people having babies to keep it up. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. Like, even... It, really, it's tactics. Like, even with here in the United States, our history against the Native Americans, they, we had just such good tactics because we learned from the Native Americans. Which is interesting, too, because they obviously had the advantage with the geography. Yeah, okay. and they knew the land. And we had less people, which was crazy at one point, less yeah. Americans fighting them. But we had the firepower and the tactics. We learned from them. Yeah. And they sold each other out. I even think, though, that like the English versus the Spanish, I think we, the English were way less brutal to the Natives than the fucking Spanish. Yeah, the English were nicer in the sense that they had a lot of agreements to not expand. Right. And we did at the beginning, but then eventually a lot of Americans, even without the government's approval, that's how Texas became a whole thing, yeah. but like, you know, just kept merging and expanding, and yeah. we found so many resources out west, and we were fight it became fighting with Natives. Both sides... The thing, everyone wants to blame each side in terms of, like, this, but both sides are pretty bad. Because yeah. the Native Americans had tribes that would kill children and kill people. But the thing is, is that you have, the reason why they're pissed at, you know, the English is because um, there's more around today to get mad at versus the Natives, you know? The yeah, people. the Natives are completely gone. Right. right virtually. So you can't really... People don't even, I, I feel like even, like, Europeans and other, like, people around the world, when they're taught about certain things they probably don't even think about the native americans right. that they existed they were quite literally the idea of them was quite literally pretty much genocided yeah um, well it's also how we think about like other like island countries out there that are isolated yeah you don't think much about them either cause, y- you know. yeah it should i think there should definitely be more educated about cultures so what keeps the culture from dying is it being taught about yeah so if people know about it i'm pissed off that we didn't learn more about South America than we did Europe because I think that side is more important because we're I think we're closer to South America. Yeah, and we should be. It's really been come a government issue of propaganda for us uh, Americans to dislike South America from our government. Right. But in reality, we should be closer because we live closer. James but, Monroe was right. We got to keep keep the Americas and the Americans and Europe and Europe. Yeah. I thought that was probably the most like well spoken. It was cool that he he kind of had that. And the politics back then in the United States was just way better. Yeah. We cared more like about being a smaller country. Entity, yeah. yeah. I think Manifest Destiny really started the trail things down. And then we got like expansion we got too like big headed in our yeah. expansionist ideas. We learned from uh, my high school AP US history teacher, Mr. Mr. Keller. Keller. He'd say like America was so desperate to sit at the, the big boy table. You know, mm-hmm. we were sitting at the little table at Thanksgiving all, every year. <laughs> we wanted to sit where the adults were. So we learned from Europeans to become the Europeans. But that wasn't the point of our country. Right. The point well, of our country was to be different. You see that in India as well. Like, India and South Africa, all these places that England owned, they take after the English. Yeah. So, you know. And their t- military tactics are from the English, and they... Um, the way they govern. Yeah, and, the way they govern. And there might be some discourse or hate towards the British, but they took the influence right. from them. Yeah. Um, you kind of see that with China as well, you know, with the stuff they owned as well. Yeah, and China, like... Yeah, it's it's interesting how it's um, how a country change changes its course over a long period of time. Because right. um, we're still considered a young country by other yeah, very people young. by South Sudan standards. Yeah, yeah. South Sudan, but um, yeah, like we've just changed so much, and um, I definitely like I, I definitely think we have higher standard of living because of it. But maybe the quality of life isn't really there because it's... And the thing is with our current state of politics is they don't view themselves as extremists, Mm -hmm. but they really are if you think about it. Like everybody has such an extremist mindset that it's crazy. Yeah, you can be extremely moderate, which is crazy to think, but you could be 
moderate to the point where if somebody wants to do something a lot more progressive or radical, you become violent towards yeah. them. Yeah. Then that's radical. And you have to agree with their side because there's no other option besides the wrong side. Yeah. Even and, though there are other options. Yeah. <laughs> that's the that's the th issue with our country is it's too two sided, which doesn't. Having two parties, never solved anything. yeah, two parties never aligns with anybody's yeah. political feelings. That's why we haven't done shit in the last. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and that's where I think our country is. If we don't change things uh, progressively, um, we're gonna just slowly deteriorate. <laughs> you know, a country doesn't just fall apart over overnight. Yeah. It, it slowly de deteriorates to the point where it just goes away, which yeah. I think will happen to our country. I mean, countries aren't built to last, governments aren't built to last forever. Yeah, the state of countries probably will, I think the country will last a decent amount of time. Yeah. But it, you're right, the government is what's going to deteriorate. Yeah. You it, saw that in France, in the French Revolution, you know, yeah. they switch a government three times, they switch the government three times in a decade. Mm -hmm, yeah. And, but the country still lived, you know. Yeah, and I think that'll happen, maybe not in our lifetime, it's just such a slow process. Yeah. It might just be, it just hopefully it just doesn't get really shitty in our lifetime where we're really yeah. old and it's just very bad to live in the we're US. Like, well, deal with this kid. <laughs> yeah. So like yeah, that's the thing. That's why I have a high interest of moving to other countries and living in other countries just because I think that there's a lot more future in other countries. Yeah. I just don't know what country it is. That's why I want to go to other countries right. and see yeah, the, yeah, like just the experience of being there helps you. Yeah. And um, I think our government, and I think it's a purposeful thing, our government wants Americans to stay in America, but we have such good opportunity to live in other countries. Yeah. If you can make American money as an American and in live in a different country, country, you're perfect. You're wealthy. And that's why so many people from other countries come over here, because they yeah. want to make American money. Yeah, which is interesting, because it, it kind of, all the people coming in have kind of deflated our value yeah and that's where other countries are trying to figure out ways to hurt the u.s dollar because once you get our money hurting you get the money hurting in any country people are going to start leaving right. yeah it's like venezuela everyone's trying to leave that country so once everybody's out of venezuela we can go in and we'll yeah be <laughs> we'll be fine so yeah that's um that's just the thing with the world that's sad like nothing can last forever nothing's going to be in the gold age forever right it could be in the gold age for a hundred years which so is awesome. Our but... goal is to get into every country's gold age. But... Yeah, we're just gonna go one to one, and like, I think, um, this is my theory. Again, I'll have to see. If you, again, it's tricky with life. You just, you just everyone's experience is different. You just have to do it. Yeah. But um, I my theory is that living in a smaller country is way better. I, in yeah. in the sense that Andorra. it's way, yeah. Andorra, yeah, it's way less stressful. You, you don't have to care as much. Potentially more language options as well. Yeah, that too. Like, yeah. Um, and you don't have to care about what your government's doing. We kind of have to care about what our government's doing. Because we're so big. Yeah, and if our government goes to war, it kind of affects us. That's why people say that local elections are way more important than presidential elections. Yeah. They really are, and they don't make it that way. Yeah. Um, it needs to be more campaigned to that. As yeah, a, and, and it's just a thing, Americans are very lazy now. We're yeah. lazy. Our founding fathers, the fact that they had a revolution, a lot of them were in their 20s, yeah. which is crazy. And they made, uh, the, the amendments they made, made it so that we could change certain things in the future. Because there's, I forget which amendment it is, but, you know, it makes it so, like, it's not... Oh, yeah, states can vote on some right. change. Yeah. yeah. Or even, the, I think, our branches of government so they, can vote. Yeah, yeah, they knew that they weren't perfect and knew that, you know... Things could change. Yeah. And it's funny that we figured out how to exploit every hole they left in, yeah. <laughs> in it. Like, that they didn't specify that... Pro I feel like if they were alive today, they'd be like, Oh, I'd go back and write this yeah. now because you guys just did this <laughs> and we didn't think of it, but you did this and you ruined it. All those loopholes. Yeah, the, like... The 27th Amendment um, that got passed, they meant to pass in the original Bill of Rights, but they just forgot. Yeah. So the, the newest amendment that we have was an old amendment that's, you know. Yeah, and you could do, only do so much in your lifetime and only think so far in the future. Right. They probably didn't think even a hundred years of the future. They probably just like, we build a country, we've done it, let's sustain it. Yeah, and that's what they were worried about. And, you know, 80 years later, you know, they had their first big issue with slavery. And yeah, and they, they're, right, and that was kind of almost their downfall was slavery because they kept pushing it back. Yeah. And they kept being like, this isn't an issue. It's going to be fine. Yeah, they're like, well, just keep pushing it back and eventually it'll just merge into something eventually. And that's how political parties started forming because originally it was, uh, slavery's not bad. 
slavery is not bad. You know, both parties were slavery is not bad. Yeah. And then the Republicans came and they're like, hey, this is because Republicans were radical at the time. They're like, slavery is a bad thing. And they're like, that's it. Yeah. And they're, and they're like, oh yeah. And then uh, freaking, yeah, Lincoln was like, we'll get rid of it once and for all. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, and it, and it is crazy to think if, um, if the Confederates won, it would have been a really different... I, I think if the Confederates won, then Europe would just completely own the U.S. I think yeah, eventually... That's why they were rooting for the Confederates. Yeah, I think eventually the Confederate government wouldn't really be built to last. And it would break, states would break into territories, and then Europe would swoop in and it'd take be, over. Like, it'd be its own, like, con- well, I guess we are our own continent. Like yeah. More countries in this continent. Yeah, and I think we'd have just so much European influence. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's why it's good the Union won. It kept the American dream for us. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I, it, it, the history of our country is insane. It's just crazy to live in a period where we're kind of at a stalemate to a decline. We're very disagreeable. Like, nobody, like, it's hard to agree. Yeah, with a lot of the things we do. And we've had just bad war after bad war not a righteous war since world war ii really right and you could argue maybe the korean war was maybe dude the korean war mash the show <laughs> lasted eight years longer than the korean war <laughs> yeah so, so in that universe the war was super long but um yeah like it, it after world war ii it just absolutely uh, destroyed things. And also, I think World War II was when we were definitely the top dog. And, and we, we, I think, after World War II, we got in that mindset that we were the top dog and we could bully anybody. But yeah. we learned that we can't. And the Soviets were our only... So we Soviets were a needed rival. They yeah. needed to level us. To keep us. us in check. Yeah. And now we almost... Like, who do we... We I don't have a rival, really. Yeah, I guess China and Russia Kinda. are the closest. Did you see the rumor that uh, China's going to invade Taiwan? Yeah, they say that every it's year, though, happen, every yeah. month. Like, And even if... I think my argument, even if they did, there's just not much positive for them to do it. Right. Like, we would still work with them if they did it. We're, we're the kind of country where we would get pissy with it, maybe have a lot of embargoes, but then eventually get over it. That's an interesting situation, though, because Taiwan views themselves as the real, like, China. Yeah. China and reveal. They make fun of China, and they're always like, yeah. It, it's, um, it's interesting in that way. But I just think the U.S. is like, we have such a strong military where we are able to literally, we could, if, if we had, like, a Hitler. Could invade Canada. If we had a Hitler show up and somehow rally enough Americans, we we would have a good shot at taking over the world. <laughs> I don't think we'd win, but we yeah. would have, we would take over, like, over half. It's tough where we're at, you know? I think the best country that can take over the world is probably, oh, you're going to laugh, Portugal. <laughs> <laughs> because, Portugal? Because they're on the edge of Europe, you know? They don't fight on two fronts, and they can focus their base in Portugal, and then they can go Completely out. Completely expand yeah. out. Yeah. I mean, but the U.S. is just, it has, we have, we're top in technology, we have some of the soldiers. I guess it probably would be fine for us to take, we have to take Canada first, and then we have to go down to South America. Yeah. Our biggest enemy would be ourselves, because yeah. nobody would be on board Nobody would it. agree with that. Yeah, <laughs> we would just destroy our own government. So, like... California would be the it would be the United States of the world, and then California. Yeah. <laughs> like... We haven't taken over California yet. That's... Uh, that's the thing. And a one world government just never works, because... No. Yeah, we've seen it before. Cultures are what <laughs> drive governments right and that's what people don't understand and americans don't understand because we're kind of stupid we yeah but we 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 have kind of a culture but not just because it's a merge it, well of that's a, that's the beauty of our country though is that we're diverse in culture because of the first amendment yeah you can have everything here but our argument our foreign affairs are terrible in the sense that we never understand what the yeah a lot of Americans don't have a good understanding of Israel versus Palestine. I don't even really. So that's nobody, why I don't ha- nobody does. Not even yeah. the people that are there. Yeah, that's why I don't have like a complete judgment on it. But people are gonna go, Palestine's great, destroy Israel, or Israel's, Israel's great, great, destroy, destroy Palestine. Palestine. Right. Yeah, and it's and it's so stupid that there's like half of the world recognizes one and the other half recognizes the other. Yeah. You know. And it's some recognize both. I like, think we should Atlantis that part and put it in the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> oh my god. The whole world destroys Just defend that. everybody that way. <laughs> but um yeah, it's it's just crazy and people 
I, I do think Americans are more naive and like we got to pick a side, we got to support this side. Where well, you really don't. Yeah, you really don't. And I mean, we shouldn't care as much about uh, the affairs of the world. We should be more worried about our own country. Yeah. We can't even control. I agree with that. We can't even control our own border. Yeah. Like the fact that a lot Canada of Canada is crazy, man. Yeah, Canada is terrible. The fact that a lot of people. Like, even for the people that come here illegal, in their argument, that it's easier to come, in some cases, over illegal is stupid. Like, we should either streamline... It's or- interesting how the U.S. immigration is very strict with Europeans, Australians, you know, people in Asia. Yeah. But they, you know, Mexico, you know, whatever. Yeah, and it's like, oh, you don't have to be a citizen. It's yeah. all right. Um, and it seems very flawed. Yeah, it's just like, just make it easier to be a citizen then. Yeah. Just have it more open. I think it should be... Most country, I think it should be in the terms of countries where you have to bring something to the table to move to that country, like actual exports, or or like career or something. Oh, career. Like, actual, like that's why, exactly. like, what that's why I'm not just straight up moving to a different country. I want to bring something to the table. I want to educate people right. um, in English or history. Even yeah. I want to bring Science. something to the table that I can positively affect that country. You shouldn't like just go to that country. Yeah, and I think I think one very educated person can shape most African countries. And I don't mean to sound disrespectful, but like they need help. <laughs> like, yeah, they do. But the s- sad thing is whenever they try to do something themselves, they get killed. Right. Um, and that's, that's all um, attributed to world war one and the, or even before world war one in the, um, what's the world Im- word imperialism. Yeah. And, and the world still kind of owns Africa just in different ways. Yeah. Um, and companies own Africa pretty much. Indian companies, Russian, U.S., and China. And we have so many soldiers in Africa. It's like, like Africa at its golden age was before imperialism was a thing. Yeah, because like they were all independent, you know. And I think Europe and a lot of ports of the world don't want a unified Africa because they would be very powerful. But they, you know, I think uh, the British and Europe. The biggest continent, I think, it's either them or Asia. I always mix up. Which one's bigger? I think Asia's technically bigger, yeah. but Africa's huge. Pretty big, yeah. Yeah. Um, like, we underestimate, because, you know, on the map, we have it smaller than what it actually is. Yeah, yeah. and, uh, like, Africa, I think Europe's smart enough to keep Africa weak. Yeah. And most uh, other countries of the world probably agree to keep Africa weak, because they would be very pop- pop- uh, powerful. And that's with anyone. Europe's gotten smart enough to... What's keeping the West in power is they're keeping the others weak. Yeah. Because the, the, Europe's pretty unified, uh, the EU, um, for the most part. So they're trying to keep the other countries weak. And BRICS has formed, which you know is Brazil, uh, India, I think Indonesia is part of it, China, Russia, and South Africa. Um, it's mainly so the, the Eastern. Order. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's mainly the Eastern world. Gotcha. Um, um, and, uh, they're trying to fight against the West, but the West has just been very good at keeping their enemies weak. At bay. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's an interesting thing. Going back to Africa, um, do you, this is a little history, alternate history question. So if you, do you think if the Carthaginians <laughs> won the Punic War, do you think Africa would be in a better state? Cause they were an African place you know i think they definitely could have and if if there was like it's crazy to think but like it was like a reverse influence where africa um, instead of europe yeah had a lot more power but the thing is with europe they already had established like celts near the north side yeah it definitely would have been a lot more fighting yeah it might just either steer a different european power to come in and take over or it would it, it could be the um Europe is like New Africa, where they're just these puppet states yeah. and kind of <laughs> essentially, yeah, yeah. And Africa's the world power, um, which would be crazy. But so Africa is just what I'm asking though is, do you think the Carthaginians would be as aggressive as Rome with their expansion, or do you think they'd be more laid back? I don't know because it's to be tough, honest. yeah, it's really tough because we don't know much about Carthage, yeah, maybe not. I don't because their main thing before the Punic War was to trade. Just to trade, because that's what they were naval superpower. Yeah. They got it from the Phoenicians. They were just really good at trading, 
and that's how they got so much money and built up. Yeah, I guess but, it would just depend who's in charge, because whoever's in charge, if they got cocky... Like, okay, yeah, For if, if Hannibal was in charge, I think he would be more expansionist. Yeah, he, he'd be like, maybe get the ball rolling, but he dies, yeah. any leader eventually dies, maybe it would stall, and then maybe it would fall apart, like, that's, it's so... So many things have to go right. That's why the Roman Empire is just a spectacle. Right. So many things went right, and whenever something went wrong, for such a long time, yeah. they still kept that they identity. It, yeah. yeah, and a lot of things went wrong in the Punic Wars for them. Like, yeah, they lost so many men. Yeah, and they somehow like just had great tacticians. Yeah, it's crazy that their tacticians aren't really talked about or remembered as much as Hannibal. Right. Well, Hannibal is was like the major driving force of Carthage. Yeah, and. Car uh, Hannibal single-handedly killed the most people in the war. Yeah, so. which is, yeah, crazy. Um, the time when leaders led their men, which right. was crazy, yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, Rome is just such a... Rome is probably... Yeah. yeah, has the most flexible government we've ever seen. Like, yeah. And it's why Europe tried to become Rome for so long <laughs> after it fell. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's, it's just crazy because we... we we like have so much literature about myth mythology um, and like fake things, but a lot of it is just inspiration of what Rome was, yeah. which is or funny even, to think. Even Greece as well. I think Greece is kind of overshadowed by yeah. Rome as well. But, yeah, you know, Rome took a lot of what they got from the Greeks, like that mythical period of living. Yeah, um, and it kind of it's funny. We look at a lot of it, stuff they did was disgusting and stuff, but still, like if you were in middle class there, that was still a high standard of living. Yeah, you're being like fed, and they still had medical stuff and plumbing, which yeah. is crazy. Um, Sure, they had brothels were, I think, kind of, like, normalized, and, like, public restrooms were, like, open, but, like, it's That's still, weird. it's funny to, to think, um... Yeah, indoor plumbing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> God, it, imagine living in a time with no indoor plumbing. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy some parts of the world don't have any True. plumbing still, yeah. but, um... Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh... It's weird. Oh, what do you think is, uh, a best, like... How advanced do you think w advanced we can get? You know what I mean? Like, we're always advancing. What do you think is, like, peak human advancing? Some people say, like, human evolution is merging with AI. Like, eventually, we're going to be so attached to AI to where we're almost using it with us, you know, as one. I think the peak is where we're at right now. <laughs> we think we're at the highest? For, if we're talking just human individuals, just, you know, how we are, I think... We have it set in stone the way... Like, we've had it since, like, the 60s. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if we just continue doing what we're doing, mm -hmm. I think it's fine. We're obviously going to keep advancing. Like, like if AI. we could stay stagnant. But you don't think, like, AI and other things would become so... Advanced? I don't know. Like, that's the thing. It's hard to predict. Like, it's, it is hard to predict, but it's happening, actually. Yeah. Like, even today... It, um, wor it worries me, is what I'll say. It's, like, I just think humans get... Th humans want change. Yeah, we, we get we don't want the same thing going. I know. Like, I unironically, we could probably live as farmers just for generation, 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 True. forever, and be fine. Yeah. But like humans get bored. That's how wars happen. That's how people kill people. It's a lot of it's boredom. Yeah. Poor is being another thing, but like boredom too. And finding a reason to do it. Well. Yeah. Um. And I think people want to be, you know, that change and do something. I think AI is just that kind of. Future. Yeah. I don't know if it's going to merge with people, but I definitely think people are going to be more and more comfortable. There'll be a fight. There's always a fight of traditionalism versus progressivism, yeah. and progressivism always eventually wins. Yeah. It just might take a long time, but it always eventually wins. Right. It worked with religion. It worked with countries, governments. It just always happens. That's a good point. Yeah. Um, and I think, uh, you know, maybe we'll have more, like, robotic people and that, stuff. I think that would actually like affect us in a negative way though if you think about it if like for the working class I think we're gonna lose a lot of jobs to yeah. AI for example yeah and I think the technical jobs which are at a need now but eventually they're just gonna be operators of AI another one like example like McDonald's I fucking went through a McDonald's drive through like three months ago and it was an AI and he's like would you like to do, you know? Um, yeah, yeah. And I was like, yes. And they're like, okay. And I was like, well, there you go. But there's nobody working there. <laughs> yeah, like, you don't need, my dad told me about, he went to McDonald's in Texas, and like, it was just, you got your. And not Whataburger? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was like one worker in the back, 
um, and like he, they made the food, but he never talked to them. He just did it through like this AI oh, thing, really? and then the like this he said this like robot thing came and rolled it out, and he got what the part food. of Texas was he in <laughs> Dallas. Oh wow! I was, I was like, what the hell? Like, and I, a new thing too is um, I saw this at an airport where you scan your card at the entrance of the store. And you don't like do a traditional checkout. You just go grab something and you walk out, and then it charges oh, wow. your card. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, uh, have you seen uh, this article popped up? I think before you got here um, for me, uh, doggy airports. Airports only for dogs. Really? Yeah. <laughs> what the heck? The dogs are flying. <laughs> that's pretty. That's funny. That's pretty cool. And then all the comments were like, "My cat is so jealous." Right now. <laughs> <laughs> dogs and cats seem still seem like the best. Ant- cats are very well behaved. All at least when I've been on flights. I liked that conversation at the cabin, um, where you were talking about domesticating. Like, can we domesticate every animal? Yeah. I thought it was interesting. It is interesting. Just seeing the video of the bee, dude. Like, apparently bees, I was reading, like, are the most intelligent insect, supposedly. We don't know a sense. lot about them. But they have, like, their own emotions. They're very independent. And they said that they feel, at least they s- suppose they feel love because you, some of them only have, like, a partner. Or it's, like, something in the case where they love their partner and when that partner dies, they're very depressed. And they show cases of depression because they don't do their normal routines and that's what depressed people do sometimes and they like fall yeah. off so they say um maybe these insects maybe insects that we don't even like really know a lot about like a primantis or something has a lot more complex emotions than we thought maybe, yeah um, but it's hard to judge anything because we don't know what anybody's thinking well, right? yeah it's, it's, it's thinking. yeah it's like the the only thing we could ever prove a theory of that is if there's an afterlife and there's a god that can give us yeah yeah, uh, uh, that power but i have definitely thought about that like if you know i'm dead and then i can see like like i can go into a certain time period and look back on certain points that you know people said stuff behind my back and like (laughs) see what they're saying yeah i I, I just don't think that i i definitely see the argument that it's nothing Mm. that seems like the most plausible yeah but there's also just chances it's not you know, it's you can't prove one or the other. That's, that's why it's always what, an I, argument. Yeah, that's why. I, I, that's why I think everybody's agnostic. Yeah, and, and it's like maybe you could have with AI if we can keep ourselves somewhat alive. Maybe eventually you could have humans in terms of immortality, where you your brain and your body gives out on you, but the AI is keeping you conscious. Yeah. Because the thing that we need is almost not our bodies or anything in our bodies. It's our consciousness. If we could keep our consciousness alive with nothing Mm -hmm. then that's you know it's kind of achievable obviously consciousness is a strange topic to talk about it because it's like what is it yeah like i'm aware right now talking to you and you're aware right now talking to me both conscious yeah but uh what is that what is our keeping us it's i think it's derivative of cog like cognitiveness which is you know your ability to think yeah so i think it's just being aware as you're thinking yeah your brain working like for example like nate blacked out right or yeah or did he just fall asleep I, well yeah he said he didn't remember much but he could have just been groggy he, right there for example when he was asleep he was unconscious yeah so, yeah when you sleep that's why dreams are different because you're thinking like you think of like obscure things like being on lsd or something yeah you know? like if people on lsd are they conscious for example you know? yeah you're seeing things yeah it's that's why drugs are so popular. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah. And it's a, another thing with uh, dreams. I guess we don't have to we keep can going. Keep, right. We can, for, you know, finish this topic and then wrap up. All but. right. But, like, dreams, it's, if you notice, it's, it's always very different for me. It's really weird. But sometimes you can feel the sensations or, like, I you're thought, eating something and you kind of taste it. I dreamt that I had a beard and mm-hmm. I woke up and I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> I just had dreams where like you're eating food and talking and you kind of like taste it or you're like yeah we're good and then... that's the thing um, I read about LSD because I was curious um, first of all do you think Aiden's taking LSD no because remember that card game where he rose his hand or whatever for taking LSD oh yeah and Ian was like bro that's not serious it's <laughs> not <That's> serious <laughs> but um, they see oh wait I'm trying to remember this real quick they they can they can hear color and they can see sound, hmm. which is weird. Oh, yeah. 
I've kind of seen that where it's uh, at least like videos of it's like what you see when you're on this and it's like colors. Yeah, like the drunk of, goggles. Yeah, kind of yeah, like Grant, that. Grant playing kickball and falling into it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you feel very fuzzy and it's like vibrations and stuff. Uh, yeah, it's um, weird. It is weird. It is quite literally, I mean, you're kind of like poisoning yourself. Kind of like alcohol. Anything that yeah. changes how your brain Functions. It's any drug, really. Yeah, it's a poison. Yeah. <laughs> You're poisoning yourself. Um, but it is interesting that these things exist. Like DMT, it's weird that DMT is a drug you can take, but DMT is something we give off sometimes when we dream and when we die. Yeah. But like, that's, uh, I just think that's kind of crazy that we can also take this drug, but when we're obviously awake, and you're dreaming while you're conscious, yeah. it's, it's different, different than actually dreaming. Yeah. Um, that's why they call it a trip, because it's very trippy. Yeah, and it's uh, it's weird how we found these things. Appa- I think I learned also in health class that LSD could potentially lead to schizophrenia. Well, yeah, I mean, it makes sense even just, like, when you just think about it, because it's, you know, you no know, vibrations and feelings and sounds. Yeah. So you're probably hearing all these things, and that probably could stay, because your brain is working differently. Growing up, I always thought that schizophrenia was, like, a thing you were born with, though. Uh, that can happen too, but you can obtain it. Interesting. Um, through medical uh, issues. Or yeah, like for example, bipolar people. You know, if they had a terrible like, like it depends on how you're raised. Really. Yeah, that too. It's literally, isn't it crazy? It's like you could literally kind of brainwash a kid into something. <laughs> that is crazy. Um, like, well, parents do it with sports all the time. Where like, like if their kid's athletic or whatever. yeah, or like their parent wasn't as good as sports so they're like i want my son to be the greatest player ever so they just push it on him yeah a hundred percent um i think that happens a lot but uh yeah i noticed that um it will have a an effect on that kid yeah sometimes positive sometimes really negative i think it depends on the parent too how they bring it to them and how they yeah you have to have really good parents for that yeah but that's that's how we get ideology too or radical people you get taught this thing and you're like look how great this is this yeah. communism's great look at this it's great and you're like oh it's great and then someone tells you it's not and, and they're like well some idiots will tell you that it's not and they're just being stupid so you're like oh all these people are being stupid right yeah yeah very, very manipulative in that way but yeah that's why i'm kind of thankful i i think i wouldn't trade being raised for anything like the way i was raised i i think it was for me, it was perfect well, because my dad and mom were the complete opposite of each other. So yeah. it's like a perfect middle ground. Same. My, my parents are like that. I, I think, and I think the fact that we're alive and at least healthy is still, um, reassuring. Yeah. Reassuring and positive in the sense that that's not like, you know, um, it's not like a hundred percent common. It's more common, but like, and we also grew up with both parents as opposed to people who grew up yeah, with one or even none. So many people, the parent is not there, yeah. or the parent's gone, or something goes wrong, and it's absolutely terrible. Or they're killed. Yeah. Like it's the fact that we even exist still is very. It's very rare, obscure, because you know we bit out a bunch of sperm cells. Yeah, and that's like one in the, we're what I think one yeah, in a trillion. Or something. Yeah, Neil deGrasse. Neil deGrasse Tyson um, talked about it. Watch out, we got a bat. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, talked about it. But I think he said like the actual is like one in seven billion or something. Uh, I heard another scientist say it's not even a number. It's, it's one in... so... Yeah. Like almost one in infinity pretty yeah. much. Near. Yeah. Um, which makes sense because there's like so many ways we can die as, I guess, as a sperm cell. Yeah. And there's so many ways that the egg couldn't, cannot get fertilized. Yeah. So it's and then we exist, and there's so many things that could go wrong while you're a baby growing yeah. as an embryo. You could die from so many things, and you hope your mom is not, you know, smoking or doing bad things because right. then you could get that fucked affects up. You, yeah. It's, Which is why people in the fifties, you know, I don't think they knew that, right? That you, of smoking. Yeah. Well, the there, the, I I heard this kind of a myth where it's like people knew it was bad, but they kept doing it. Interesting. Yeah. It's kind of like I mean, there's some things that are bad. I mean, playing video games can be bad if you do it all the time. It, if you do too much of one thing, it's yeah, not healthy. Like, like if you work out too much, you know. Yeah, it's like sometimes in sometimes you might know it's bad, but you do it anyway. So right. I think that was just the societal norm. Alcohol is that way. I think most people know it's bad, but and they Andrew, do it. Andrew even admitted when we were searching for alcohol to buy for the cabin weekend trip, you know, um, that um, he he only drank because he knew it was wrong. 
because it was before he was 21. And that, yeah. he liked the thrill of getting away with it, I guess. Yeah, that's what makes it... I always say, like, that made drinking, I guess, more entertaining when you're younger. And then when you're 21, you're like, ah. Yeah, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't experience that because I waited until I was 21 to drink. Yeah, it, it, drinking to me is just... Um, I just don't really like doesn't it. Doesn't do it for you. Yeah, and I can't really justify it because it's like it doesn't make me feel better. There's no like positive. I will say I th- I, f- I had a great time this weekend or last weekend I guess. Yeah. But it was because j- I I was at the point where I was not sober, but everybody else was drunk around me. Yeah. So, so I was, it was right. uh, uh, that was a good relaxing. feeling. Yeah, I I was kind of probably the same. Yeah. Um. It w- but it was just like. Uh, uh, it was more like the environment I was was where I was at nights. Nice. It's not like that. I could have done that without alcohol. It's True. Not, like that was just more of a. Plus. No, yeah, that was, that was the best thing about going to those parties with all of you, as the sober one. There was sometimes where it was annoying because if some people would get, yeah, you know, yeah, <laughs> touchy a little bit, and uh, that was a bit annoying because tactile. You know, yeah, and. <laughs> and um, but there was times where it was really funny because you watch people do stupid shit and you're like in a normal state and you're like, huh, yeah, this really, fucking it's, idiot. It's funny how alcohol can just makes someone stupid. But it's also funny that you're also like conscious. It depends. You know what you're doing. I just I heard it depends on your most enhanced trait at that. Like it, it enhances your most like trait that you're exposing yourself to at that time. Like it yeah. enhances it tenfold. Yeah, but you are still like aware. Like if someone ever. If someone ever sleeps with someone and they were drunk, yeah, you get a lot of you get a lot of horny drunks. Yeah, but they know what they were doing. Right? Right. It's like you, that's still you know it, when Sketchy. people say it's questionable, it's still on borderline of rape right. because you you know what you're doing. Alcohol doesn't alter your uh, mind. No. It's not like if you took LSD or right. meth, which actually heroin. Yeah, that right. could make you violent and kill someone and you didn't even know. Right. Where alcohol, you know what you're doing. You know, you you have you still have that power of choosing, because you know you it's. I don't think it has to do with how you take it, because obviously you take acid the same way you take yeah alcohol. But you know, I, I don't know. I don't know what that boils down to. Maybe it's. I think it's maybe it's it's just whatever's in it, <laughs> and how it affects your psyche. Um, yeah, um, and your blood. Yeah, cells like heroin. I guess is kind of crazy because you inject it into yeah. your blood. Um, I never got that too because it's like, what drives someone to start injecting? Things? It's a thrill. It's a thrill thing. Like because it's for certain people. Obviously, I don't like you and I injecting don't like sticking things. needles See? into you. Yeah, but you know, certain people are into that. You know, it's it's just a weird thing. Uh, it's a weird thing. You know, again, that's why people have like these fetishes that don't make any sense. Yeah, so, I think a lot of that stems from poor childhood, <laughs> but, um... There you go as well, like, that's the thing with heroin, poor childhood. Yeah, poor childhood, and... I think poor childhood and lack of education is two of the worst things you could do to a human. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was very fair. Yeah. But, um, anyways... Can like, wrap it up here, yeah? Yeah, I guess it's been a long... It was a good practice. one. Yeah. All right, well, that's going to be it. Um, we're not really forcing ourselves to upload on a schedule. It kind of makes us more relaxed that way, and that way we have more topics to talk about because, you know, it's been a little bit longer time as opposed to week after week after week. Yeah. And we think it's easier to do it that way. But thank you guys for listening. If uh, um, I, I always say if you did, but obviously they're hearing us. Yeah. So thank you guys for listening, and um, we'll see you guys next podcast. 135 is what this was, I think. So Bye-bye. We'll Bye-bye.